Good morning, Burley Glenwood boys and girls. This is a Zoom recording from Mrs. Mears's backyard. So see, I've got a tree up there that's just starting to bud out. And I'm sure you'll see my dogs coming and going in the background. So today we are going to do 13.4. So if you have not already opened up your um, digital version of your Common Core, please pull that up on the screen so that we can work it together. So I am going to screen share. Alrighty. So for now, I'm going to leave it over on the left hand side because in a little bit, I'm going to pull up another thing that I want to have side by side. Maybe I'll pull that up now. So I'm going to slide this over and I'm going to pull that up and have that going at the same time. Sort of, kind of, maybe. I don't want it to only take up part of the screen. So you should also have. Um, digital graph paper that got loaded into your Google Classroom. If that did not happen, um, hopefully you can either contact me or contact Ms. Hattlestad and we will get the digital graph paper loaded into your account. So number one, what number sentence makes the numbers, what number makes the number sentence below true? So remember this is an example of the identity property you want to pick which number would make 746 times something equal 746. So please drag your circle over to the correct answer. And number two, Eva bought eight dolls. So I'm going to mark that because that's an important number. She spent $56 on the dolls. Each doll cost the same amount. What was the cost? of each doll. That one is equal sharing. So please set up a division problem and solve it. Number three, Lori planted eight tulip bulbs in five rows. So I'm gonna make, Lori, let's make Lori green since we've already got green. So we've got Lori, eight tulips, five rows. Carla, I'm gonna make her pink. Carla planted seven bulbs in four rows. Ah, you know, does that? There we go. In four rows. How many more tulip bulbs did Lori plant than Carla? So that how many more is an important word. So you want to make a multiplication equation with the eight and five. And then you want to make a multiplication problem with the seven and the four, and then you are figuring out the difference between the two of them. So please do that now. Okay, number four, a figure is divided into four equal parts. What fraction represents each part? You need a unit fraction for that one. And remember, a unit fraction always has a, for its numerator, and the number of parts that it is divided into is its denominator. Okay, number five, 56 divided by seven. So please solve that now. 81 divided by nine. That's one you could use the finger trick for. 10 divided by two. So what is half of 10? Number eight, write a number sentence. Draw a picture to help solve the problem. You could pick one of the number sentences that was up above. Then all you need to do is draw an array to match it. Personally, I would do something small like the 10 divided by 2. If you want, you could do a multiplication one. So you could have a small multiplication problem. Do not do something like 9 times 9 because that's a whole lot of copy pasting of different little shapes to make an array that large. <clears throat> number 9, find the perimeter of the figure shown below. So remember, on a shape like that, you can make tick marks to go around the shape and then count up all the tick marks. So I'm gonna make little tick marks. I am not gonna tell you what the perimeter is of your shape, but you can count my tick marks after I am done making them. Please make sure you label it units because you don't want just a number there. You have to have the units with it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go watch the video. Let's see if I can find the video. Yay! Open to the right screen. Love it when that happens. 
and I have to make sure that I have it set so that you can hear it. So share computer sound. There we go. I'm actually getting better at this. What shapes can you make when you know the perimeter? Think about this question during the lesson. Kara wants to design a shape for her garden. She will use all of the fencing. What shape can she make? Let's find out. What information is given in the picture to help solve the problem? The picture shows that the length of the fence is 14 yards. What are some ideas for a shape you can use for the garden? So, you could start simple with a rectangle or a square. Not sure that you could do a square with that one. But you can get creative and have a really wonky shape. Let's see what she does. You can make a garden in the shape of a square, rectangle, and so on. You can draw a picture or use straws to act out the problem. Each straw is one unit. How long is one unit? So in this case, each unit probably is going to represent one yard since it told us her fence length was 14 yards. One unit is one yard long. Use 14 straws to make a shape. Why are you using 14 straws? because the straws represent your yards. The length of Kara's fence is 14 yards, so the perimeter of the shape is 14 yards. Since each straw represents one yard, you will need to use 14 straws to represent 14 yards. Make a rectangle with a width of one yard. What is the figure you made? The figure is a rectangle. How do you know? So hopefully you are thinking, well, I have two pairs of parallel sides and my corners or my angles are each 90 degrees. Because it has four right angles and the opposite sides are the same length. What is the length of each side? So they already told us that this side over here is one yard, which means this side is one yard. And we can count what we have here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this rectangle is a one by six. Two sides are each six units long, and two sides are each one unit long. How can you check that the shape you made has the correct perimeter? Think back to that dorky little so song. You add up all the sides. You can add the lengths. Kara needs exactly 14 yards of fencing to make a rectangle with sides that are 6 yards and 1 yard. Now you know how to make a shape when you know the perimeter. Try making some other shapes with a perimeter of 14 yards. Think about what you know about triangles, quadrilaterals, and other polygons. Remember to use closed figures. Okay, <clears throat> so now back to our smart board thing. Let me move that. Yeah, hit that button. So our problem of the day says solve look for more than one answer the length of each straw is one unit how can you use straws to make a shape that has a perimeter of 12 units record the shape you made and its perimeter on grid paper then find a different shape with a perimeter of 12 units so i pre-programmed over here some whoopsie let me just move that out of the way I've got some shapes and we can copy and paste them. Let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. So let's set it to 100. Oh, that's better. So in this first thing, it told us we want a perimeter of 12. 
So this sample one, I'm going to grab it. I'm going to control C to copy it and control V to make a new one. It's kind of like Velcro. So I right now, this one that we are starting with is two, four, six, eight, but they want it to be 12. So let me just make it one bigger and let's see what happens. So now I've got two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's not quite big enough. So let's make it one chunk bigger and see what happens. So I've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I came up with the right perimeter. And this one is a two by four. And it said, record the shape you made and its perimeter on grid paper. So I'm going to grab this. Control C, Control V, and that way I can use it to type. I can type on it. Record the shape. So it's a rectangle. And its perimeter equals, and I'm labeling that 12 units. Oopsie, spell it right. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Let's fix that. Hello, click, click. Hello, I want to type on you. There we go. Perimeter is 12 units. There's lots of different ways I can make a rectangle with a perimeter of 12 units. That is just one of them. You are welcome to pause the video and experiment and make it different um, ways. You can have a wonky one where it's like a stair step because they did not specifically say that you had to have a rectangle. So I just started with a rectangle, so that made it easier. Okay, on to question one. Copy and complete each figure to show the given perimeter. So we notice for number one, we have a shape that is one, two, three, four across. So I'm going to come up here to my line tool and I'm going to make a line one, two, three, four. And I want it thicker. So let's make it nice and thick. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Now I've got it four across. I'm going to do a control C and a control V. That way I don't have to start all over again. I'm going to connect that guy in the corner and bring this guy down. Okay, so now I have it as four by four. It told me I need to finish the square. Copy and complete each figure to show the given perimeter. Use grid paper. So I need it to have a perimeter of 16. Right now, four by four is eight. So I'm gonna do another V. That gave me another one of those. Oh, maybe I'll make them even darker. They're not showing up as good as I had hoped. So I'm gonna connect that guy there. And this guy here, I'm gonna make them darker because I'm not happy with how dark they are. So I'm grabbing them, coming up to my line weight. And let's go eight and oh, let's be creative. Let's make them, um, ooh, how about this dark red? There we go, now I can see him nicely. So I'm gonna control C to copy it, control V to Velcro it, and now I gotta finish making my square. So let's double check that our perimeter is 16. So four plus four is eight, plus four is 12, plus four is 16. So I'm gonna grab this, Control C, Control V. And this was number one. One period, enter, and my perimeter was 16 units, I believe. There we go. Yay, finished number one. Okay, number two, that one's kind of wonky. So that's going to take me a moment to draw. 
but I'm going to start by grabbing one of these guys so I'm not having to start fresh all over again. So control C, control V, but I'm going to change the color. On that one, it's green, so I think I'll go with green too. So let's make it green. Ooh, there's a green. That'll pop out at me. Okay, so it looks like I have a chunk that is one tall. So I'm going to start by doing that. There's my little one tall guy. Then I have a chunk that goes over two. So control C, control V. So now I need my chunk to go over two. Okay, right now I'm up to a perimeter of three. So I've got one, two, three. Now I go down one, so control V. There we go. Now I'm up to four. Now I go over one, control V. I gotta connect him. There we go. So now I'm up to, I believe, five. One, two, three, four, five. I need a perimeter of 10. Well, I'm worried if I go this way that I'm gonna make him too big. Because if I go down and then over and then up, it's gonna be way too big. So maybe I'll close it this way and see what happens. So control V. Bring that guy over and bring him up. Whoopsie, that didn't do what I wanted. Hello, let's stretch out. There we go, stretched him out. Control C, Control V. Bring this guy over. This guy over. Now let's count. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, can't forget that guy, eight, nine, ten. Ooh. Oh, and it's supposed to be a six-sided figure. I suppose I should pay attention to that. Let's see, does my shape have six sides? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yay! I have a six-sided figure, and I have the right perimeter. C, control V. So this was number two. So I'm going to make that a number two. And I don't need to say that. There we go. Okay, so I am done with number one and done with number two. And now I'm going to read number three. It says, look at the examples above. And so one of our examples was this one by six. And then one of our examples is this guy. And it looks like that one is a three by one, two, three, four, so a three by four. Describe the lengths of the sides of a third rectangle that has a perimeter of 14. So there was a one by six and there was a three by four. We need to come up with another rectangle that also has a perimeter of 14 yards. So I'm gonna grab this stuff and use it. That way I'm not starting from scratch. Control C, Control V. And I'll bring it down here. And I'm going to make this one say number three. Hello. Maybe. I want a perimeter of 14. Well, right now, the shape I've got is too big. So I need to think, what can I do to make it smaller? And I need to make it smaller by two chunks so that it's 14 because it was 16. But what happens if I just go, could I do that? I could. Could I do a two by something? I could. I like the idea of doing a two by something. So I'm going to move this guy over here. Move this guy up. I need to shorten him because he's way too long. So right now, I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This would be 11, 12. Ooh, I think I could just have 13 and 14. I think I could do that. Let's try that, see what happens. And if I mess it up, all I got to do, this is easier than drawing it on paper pencil. So all I got to do is move my sides. Oh, whoops, didn't mean to move that guy. Get out of my way. There we go. Let's come on over and get this guy. Now let's slide him up. And now let's double check. Two three, four, 
five, six, seven. Remember, I can double it now. So two um, plus that five got me seven. Seven times two is 14. That works. That has a perimeter of 14 units. I'm going to slide this down over here. There we go. That way I'm conserving space on my paper. Okay, number four. Mike wants to design a shape for his garden. He wants to use exactly 18 meters of fencing. So it needs to be bigger than number one because number one was only 16. So I need to think of a way to make it two larger. Your shape may end up being different than my shape. So I'm going to copy this guy. So we'll see. Control V. I'm going to drag it down over here where I've got some room. There we go. That's not bad. So this was number four. And I want a perimeter of 18 this time. Okay, my stuff is not lined up very nice. I want to be on the line. So there we go. And slide you over. Slide you over. So before, that had a perimeter of 16. I just need it too longer. So I think I could probably just move this guy. Let's see what happens if I do that. Oh, let's move you over. You're in my way now. Oh, don't do that. I want to slide you over. Yay, that worked. Okay, let's make him a little longer. And then we will check our measurements because it's always good to double check. Don't just, just assume you did it right. Okay, that's a little wonky wonky. I want it perfect. Hello. Okay, it's going to stay wonky. Okay, we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine plus nine is 18. That works. So hopefully, You've been building these right alongside me. You may have to pause the videos because you haven't played with these shapes tools as much as I have. So for some of you, this is a great spot for you to stop for the day. If you're like, no, I want to do more math, you are welcome to keep going with me. But the independent practice and the problem solving are meant for Thursday's work. If your parents are fine with you keeping working on math, you are welcome to keep going. So number five, it says in five through seven, we want to draw a figure. It does not have to be a square or a rectangle. You can get a little funky monkey on some of these. Um, there's others that end up having to be um, a rectangle. I'm going to stick with rectangles because that's the easiest to model. Things like this guy for number two over here, that makes my brain hurt. But you are welcome to take extra time and be creative. And Ms. Haddlestat and I would love for you to turn these particular papers in so that we can see how creative you got with your shapes. So number five, I'm aiming for 12. I'm gonna go back and grab this guy because that one's a good starting point. So control C, control V. Now I got to slide it down. Oh, I got more than I bargained for. So I'm going to bring it down here. And I'm going to scroll down. So this is not number one. Clickety doo da, clickety a, change it to number five today. Okay, so I want a perimeter of 12. And right now it's too big, it's 16. So let's see if I move it let's just move it to there and see what happens so i need to shorten these guys and shorten these guys oh whoops i moved him instead of shortened him that's not what i wanted to do there we go that's better okay two plus two is four four plus four is eight eight plus the four we had before is 12. Yay, that worked. Could you have made a different rectangle? Yes, you could have had a different one. Alrighty, now let's look. Number six, four units. That's going to be a little itty bitty guy. So, uh, oh, I think I'm going to move this guy right here. So I have more room on my paper. 
because I'm hoping not to have to make another copy of this paper. So let's see, so control C, control V. So for number six, I want four units. So this is gonna be a little itty bitty guy. And that reminds me of where we started with. So up here, I started with a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That guy's too big, but he's a good one to start with. So I'm gonna do a control C, control V, and I'm gonna drag him way down here. Maybe he wanted to stay where he was. Ah, come back. See, Mrs. Mears has te technical difficulties from time to time also. So it's not just you guys. And I have many hours of practice. Okay, so let's put you right here. Now, right now he's too big. Well, let's see what happens if I just shrink him. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. He's still too big because I only want a perimeter of four. So let's shrink him again. One, two, three, four. It's perfect. He's a little itty bitty guy. Okay, now number seven. I want a perimeter of 22. That's going to be a pretty good size one. So I'm going to grab this guy. Control C, Control B. And I'm going to bring him over here. And I'm going to number six. I'm going to go Control C, Control V. And bring that here. So for number seven, we want a perimeter of 22. 22. I think I'm gonna move them up even higher. That way I have more room to work. Oopsie, don't do that. Grab some head. Oh, I want you to move a little. You don't want to move. There we go. So right now I'm at four. Now I'm at six. Now I'm at eight. Now I'm at 10. Ooh, getting close. Let's see what happens when I go like this. So here's, oh, that looks just like this guy over here. And that guy was 12. So I'm at 12 now, so I still need to get bigger. So I just added two more. Now I'm at 14. Now I'm at 16. Now I'm at 18. Now I'm at 20. Now, I think I'm going to be at 22, but I'm not just going to guess. I am going to go check. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Five plus six is 11. So these two sides would be 11. So that means these two sides would be 11. So my number seven has a perimeter of 22 and I'm just gonna move him. There we go, now he's snug as a bug in a rug next to his little friend there. There we go. Okay, number eight. Darius wants to design a birthday card. He has exactly 18 inches of yarn that he wants to glue around the edge of a card. Draw a card design so he, that la, 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 la. draw a card design he can make use grid paper. Okay, well, I am going to start by reminding myself of what his shape needs to be. Control C, Control V. So this is number eight. Oops, not 87, huh? Eight. And I want a perimeter of 18. And they told me it, it's inches this time, not units. So I'm going to label that inches. Okay, you know, maybe I'm going to go like this. Delete. And make it longer. Okay, so I need a shape with a perimeter of 18 inches. Move these guys off to the side. So this guy was 22. He's too big, but I'm going to start with him. Control C, Control B. And let's, oh, I'm gonna move more stuff. Get out of my way. Goodbye. 
So I'm moving him off the page. And he's there if I need him for later. So let's move you right here. There we go. And remember, that guy was 22. He's too big. But I can change him to make him work. So if I shorten it by one, I'm getting rid of two inches. So 18 take or uh, 22 take away two is 20. Now I'm going to shorten it up again. So taking two inches off. I think I just got us to 18, but let's double check. So we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Four plus five is nine. Five plus four is nine. Nine plus nine is 18. That works. I want to change the color. I want to do something more interesting. Let's go with a blue. Oh, bummer. It's not transparent anymore. Okay, I'm going to do a control Z because I want to go back to transparent. I like to be able to see the lines. And I can't remember what I did to make it transparent earlier. So that would not be a fast fix. Draw, draw two different shapes that have a perimeter of 24. So now I need two shapes with a perimeter of 24. So let's start with this, Control C, Control V. Move this up here. Alrighty, so this is number nine. And I want a perimeter of 24. So I'm gonna go grab the blue guy so I can use, ah, thought I was gonna go grab the blue guy. Hello, oh, good, he is there. So I'm going to control C, control V, and then I'm going to slide him down. Come down to where I want to use you. There we go. Now he's about where I want him. So earlier we found this guy was 22, and he was a 5 by 6. So I'm going to put him here, even though he's covering up his friend. So let's go 5 by, is that 6? Let's see. Okay, five by six, that's 22. That's not quite big enough. So I need it bigger by two. So I need one here and one here. So let's check. Six plus six is 12. Six plus six is 12. 12 plus 12 is 24. That works. Alrighty, now let's make another one. Now, they can't be the same exact shape. I can't just plop down two six by sixes because it says two different shapes. But if I take some off on one spot, I can add some on the other. So I'm going to take two inches off there and add two inches here. So I now have a five by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five plus seven is 12. Seven plus five is 12. So I have two shapes that both have perimeters of 24. Okay, let's see what we need to do for a number. Oh, yay, I can just switch to this now. So I'm gonna make this bigger. Number 10, use the picture at the right for 10 and 11. I'm going to go back and come back to it, and then it'll make it nice and big for me. There we go. Use the pictures at the right for 10 and 11. Elisa bought one scarf and three hats. What was the total cost of these items? So let's use a little strategy. One scarf. Okay, here's the scarf. And then three hats. Here's my hats. You can set this up as a long addition problem, or you can use some multiplication. So I'm going to show you both ways. So if I'm going to do the long addition, I know she has one scarf. So she's got 16 bucks of scarf going on. Yeah. There we go. And three hats, each of those hats is seven bucks. 
So seven, please be nice and write it for me. Seven and seven. Ah, seven. So that is one way you could set it up. I'm not giving you the answer. I want you to solve it. The other way you can set it up, I'm gonna change color so you know this is a different equation. I'm still gonna have that one scarf. I am still gonna have the 16. But I can use a strategy of multiplication. I'm gonna use parentheses so that you remember this comes first. That's my attempt at parentheses using the mouse pad. So there were three. Okay, now I gotta get back to purple. Three sevens. You're still gonna have the same grand total, the same answer. Those are just two different methods to get your answer. So please solve those now. I'm not gonna give you the answer on them. I want you to do some of the work. Okay, number 11, how much more, that's important, that lets me know I'm doing what operation? Hopefully there's something, ooh, we gotta subtract. How much more does a sweater and let's make sweater yellow. So here's the sweater over here. How much more does a sweater cost than mittens? Mittens blue. Here's mittens. Mittens. So I need to set up a subtraction problem. So you are going to have one number. And the other number. So you are setting that up as a subtraction problem. And if you're like, I really want to stack them, you are welcome to stack them. Um, so if you're like, please show me what it looks like stacked, I can do that real quick. I'm just going to copy this. Show you what it would look like stacked. So I would start with that. I would have that. I would have my minus, and you're not going to have an equal sign in, in that style of problem, but you do want your subtract line. So I'm not going to give you the answer for that one. I want you to solve that one yourself. Number 12, look for a pattern in the table, copy and complete. So pause the video and copy down this table. Now, as I look at the table, I am looking at what the top counts by. The top seems to be counting by ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, let's see if we can figure out what the bottom might be counting by. Eight, 16, don't know, 32, don't know, 48. So one times eight is eight. Two times eight is 16. Hmm, I think I have a count by eight pattern. So as you are filling in your table, make sure that you are counting by eights on the bottom and fill in your missing numbers. Okay, on number 13, which of shapes have the same perimeter? When you take the math test on Friday, there are some questions just like this. Don't just well, guess, take a moment to count them. So which pair of shapes have the same perimeter? So one, two, three, four, five. Five times five, or five times two is 10. So this shape has a perimeter of 10. Raylan, what are you doing back there? Okay, now let's count this guy. This guy, I can't use that strategy because he's irregular. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, cool. These guys both have a perimeter of 10. Okay, let's just double check because sometimes there are um, questions where we have two correct answers. Two, four, six, eight. This one has a perimeter of eight. One, two, three, four, five. So times two would be 10. That one has a perimeter of 10. 
Okay, here's another irregular one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This guy has a perimeter of ten. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, I wouldn't have guessed he was that much bigger. Come on, I want to write a 12. Ooh, not bad, upside down. Okay, this guy, I have three plus three is six, seven, eight. Okay, this guy looks like a Tetris piece. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, there's a lot of tens on this little thing. So hopefully you just found that there's only one option where both shapes have a perimeter or an outside of 10. I believe that's the last problem of this lesson. Let's go to our quick check. Please follow along as I read it to you. And remember, your goal is to get a better score than Mrs. Mears gets. Okay, can I make it big? Oh, that shows up pretty good. Okay, Marlin made a shape for his garden. The perimeter was 10 yards, which shows the shape that he made. Take your time and count around the shape. Don't just guess. Remember, you are counting the outside marks on the shape. You're not counting on the inside. You're counting the outside edges. Number two, so you're going to have some items uh, Friday on the test that are just like this particular one. So this is a great time to practice. Which pair of shapes have the same perimeter? This is not going to time you out. Take your time. If you can figure out how to zoom your screen, do that and carefully count the perimeter of each shape. Okay, number three. Which pair of shapes have the same perimeter? Zoom in if you can, take your time, count the perimeter of each shape. Remember, you're counting the outside. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this little guy has a perimeter of 10. And then here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. This guy has a perimeter of eight. And look, he's down here again. So this guy's probably got eight. This guy's probably got eight. So keep that in mind that some of those shapes repeat. So count them carefully. Okay, our last one. Oh, no, I guess that's number four. I was just hopeful thinking that. Nira wants to make a shape with a perimeter of 10. Which shape can she make? So carefully count around each shape you're finding one with 10. And even just eyeballing, I think we can all agree, this one's probably a no way, Jose, it's too small. So then you know, oh, I'll count A, B, and D really carefully. Okay, David is designing a new playground. He uses grid paper to match out the shape of the playground. What is the perimeter of the playground? So I'm guessing since all of these are labeled in yards, each of these little tick marks is one yard. So carefully count around the shape. Don't forget these funny little jogs, they count also. So carefully count your way around the shape. And I think probably can realize that this seven yards is a no way, Jose, because just going along the bottom, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So just the bottom part is seven. So the whole shape is gonna be way bigger than seven. So now you've narrowed it down to B, C, or D, but do count it carefully. And remember, your goal is to get a better score than Mrs. Mears because she just got 0% because she didn't actually answer any of them. So I am going to stop sharing my screen. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a wonderful day. Make sure that you are carefully following along with the lessons. And then on Friday when you take the test, remember it's your test, not your parents' test. So we want to see how you're doing with the concept of perimeter and not how your parents are doing with the concept of perimeter. I hope you're having a wonderful day. 
and we will see you tomorrow.